So, if you went to, uh, to college in the, the 90s, maybe the late 90s, uh, and you had a graphing calculator, you might have had one of these, uh, these old HP 48G graphing calculators. Um, this is mine that I used in school at UCF. Um, one of the cool things about these things was uh, they had these uh, serial transfer ports. Uh, this one had um, infrared and then RS-232 serial transfer um, built into it. So you could, uh, back at the beginning of the internet, you could go find uh, different programs on uh, news groups and um, occasionally websites. Um, they could upload to the phone um, and then play on the phone. Um, one of the popular ones was uh, the Chip 8 emulators. Uh, since the phone had such a limited amount of RAM, you could load the emulator up one time, take up, you know, two, three kilobytes with that, and then collect a whole bunch of these Chip 8 ROMs and then play them on there. Um, anyways, there was no YouTube videos that I could tell that showed you how to do all this stuff, so uh, we're going to try to close that gap here. So I got my calculator over here all powered up and connected using a regular uh, USB serial modem um, on Linux. Um, it's one of the hardest things I had trouble with was finding the right uh, emulator binaries to put on the calculator. Um, this GitHub repo, Chromato 4 HP 48 Superchip, this one seemed to have like the ones that I could actually get to work on an HP 48G. Uh, the ones in particular were G chip and then GCHPC. Um, so that's where the emulators came from. Uh, for games, uh, Chip 8 games, Chip 8 games seem to be pretty universal. Um, HPCalc.org, um, if you go to the chip section, uh, they have a bunch of different uh, games you can take a look at. Um, they even give you a little uh, screenshots over on, on, on a bunch of them. Uh, David Winter's Chip 8 emulation page. Uh, he's got a description of each of his uh, ROMs that he made. Some screenshots. And then this link here on this page is a link to the zip file that's got tons and tons of those things in it. Um, one of the new sources that wasn't available in the 90s is uh, the Octo Project. Um, I guess this guy wrote a Chip 8 emulator um, that runs right in your browser. You can check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, they have a little Octo Jam, I guess in October of each year. And then some of the, the cool projects that came out of that, he's got right there on his website that you can also try out. I don't know how, how well they'll run on the, the slower HP 48G. I think the Octo emulator, you can clock it up really fast. Um, I also on my website have um, my own ROM that I created um, under the custom ROM section, floppybird.rom. Uh, click on this, view raw, and then you can just save that. So now that we got all the ROMs, the emulators downloaded, uh, let's fire up uh, a terminal and then. Uh, transfer those things over for you. So I was already running that earlier, but we'll, we'll demo it fresh here. So those are all the emulators. Let's start up Kermit. Um, I guess before I start keep Kermit, I'll show you this too as well. Um, if you search for Kermit in the Ubuntu repos, um, the Kermit I'm using is C Kermit. Uh, I briefly tried G Kermit. I didn't get very far with it. Um, Kermit seemed to be what I wanted. So we'll start that. Uh, gotta tell it what US, what uh, serial port to use. My USB to RS232 adapter is TTY USB 0. Um, If you do a ls of the slash dev folder, um, these are all the different ones. Um, the serial ports are usually TTYS 0 or 1 if you have a real serial port on your hardware. Um, USB 0 is like the adapters. TTYACM is also one that I've seen for 
these adapters. Um, for the USB ones, if you do a listing before you plug it in, the listing afterwards, and look for the file that appears, that's how you'll be able to tell which one it is for sure. Ninety six hundred baud is the fastest the, uh, the calculator can transfer at. Whoop. I've tried to whittle this down to less commands than what you're seeing here, and I haven't had much success. Uh, I think you need all of them. I'll uh, copy these onto the YouTube description. And they'll probably be on my, my GitHub website as well. I found these somewhere, and uh, I, I don't even know where to source it from. Uh, what web post I found all of it on, and finally got it to work. Um, so after you get all that, you should be ready to transfer. Um, let's first, uh, I'm sorry, send gchip. So you can start the transfer over there, and then come over to the calculator, and then hit the option key, I.O. Go to transfer. All the default options here seem to work well. Just hit receive. The, uh, the computer will automatically retrack a few times for a little while. When the transfer is done, the uh, receiving and packet count uh, lines just go away on the transfer app and then go back to that regular screen. Uh, we'll also send over GCHPC. Then come over here, hit receive again. CD around, uh, change directories, uh, like a, this is, you know, a shell itself in this current application. Um, we'll send Joust over, that's a cool uh, high-res super chip game. and Floppy Bird, the ROM that I made myself. And then we'll go in here to transfer a game of two of the David Winner games. Um, try Tetris. Yeah, I'll try Blinky. Two versions of Blinky. One of them's high res, one of them's low res. I don't know which one this one is. Alright, just hit on to cancel and get out of there. So now and hit the var menu. Those are all of the uh, different ROMs and the emulators. 
Um, you can also hit Option and then go to Memory. And from this screen, if you wanted to, you could hit the, the check and select a few of these. And then Purge would uh, erase them from the memory if you decide uh, you don't like whatever you downloaded. You don't have to consume that memory forever. Um, so we'll try Tetris here. So uh, click on that variable item. It's just a string that pops up on the stack. And then click on one of the emulators to start it. And then the chip 8 buttons are all along here. Um, 7, 8, 9, divide. There's 16 buttons all together. Um, hit back to exit the emulator. We'll try Blinky. Some of them have a little string where you can see the, the author name and it on the line there. Kind of gives them a little credit. I think this is the low res blinky. And then he died. Joust. stages and everything in there. Alright. And then uh, last but not least, my own personal. I, I didn't think to put my name in it. Kind of like Flappy Bird, but since it's a throwback run on this old uh, Chip 8 system, I called it Flappy Bird, like a floppy disk. Just dodge the pipes. That's all you gotta do in this game. And it just starts over. Alright. So there you go. Good luck. Have fun with that.